Welcome back. I'm Chris Van Oker. You're watching On the Record, and today we are talking about fair boundaries, which is perhaps a new way of looking at the way political boundaries are drawn in Utah. The initiative, you want to put it on the ballot next year, 2010. Correct. Not easily done, from what I remember. Oh, you're right. It's a daunting process. It requires uh, at least uh, 95,000 signatures, and they have to come from statewide. You have to have 10% from every Senate district now, so 26, excuse me, 26 of 29 Senate districts, so that you can't have a focus just on the urban area. It has to be statewide that you gather the signatures, when do and you they have to be valid. When do you hope to start collecting signatures? Uh, very soon. We have just uh, had the petition initiative approved by the Governor's Office of Planning and Budget, but there is a fiscal note that's been attached. A hefty one, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, that's correct. And as of yesterday, that note's been challenged. We filed a suit in the Utah Supreme Court uh, to have the note properly evaluated, and if it's inaccurate, to have it be rewritten. What so is, that will slow the process down a bit. What did they put the note at? 1,036,000. And you think a more accurate number is? Well, when we had uh, analogous legislation in this last session that didn't even make it out of rules, in right. both bills, there was a note of 250,000. Senator, this question may or may not be related to what she just said. If I were in a majority party, Republican or Democrat, depending on who is in charge, I'm not sure I'd want this. Absolutely not. Power is, is great. I mean, the ultimate power uh, grab is right there in the legislature, and you throw a few bones to the minority party to keep them quiet. And uh, that's the very essence of why this needs to be changed. How, how hard are they going to push back on this? Oh, they'll push back very hard. Uh, because if, if I was in charge, and your question is real relevant, if I was in charge, what would I do? You know, I don't want to give up a safe haven and a safe seat and be able to do that. But the reality, the political reality, is that things are changing and people are becoming more astute. And they want better representation. I think the day of Utahns simply being sheep is over. I, I think that when you look at the things that we've accomplished, that they've been accomplished in this state, uh, there's change uh, happening on the horizon. And I give a lot of uh, credit to Governor Huntsman. I think he's been a, a leader about change and, and fairness in the political process. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're running for something. Maybe for another show. <laughs> Rob, I joked in the beginning about Facebook. Mm -hmm. But Having said that, and it seems I talk about this almost every week on this show, can you talk a little bit about, for a cause like this, how valuable a tool that can be? Uh, <clears throat> Facebook and all the different social networking uh, sites uh, are extremely valuable. I mean, that's, that's a, a wonderful place for us to be in contact with volunteers, um, to be in contact with people that that we have networked with individually uh, on previous campaigns, previous issues. And uh, we're finding that, that in addition to finding people to come and volunteer and work with us throughout the state, but it's also a, a great place to communicate and to let people know what's happening, when we're having, uh, very simple, we're having uh, public hearings right now as part of the process so simple just to go on Facebook as part of the Facebook group and post that we're having a meeting and get people to actually show up. Uh, it, it was a, you know, I, I think political campaigns everywhere are, are finding it absolutely invaluable. Lisa, do you have any sense about how many other states have something similar already in place to what you're proposing? My understanding is about 20 states have something similar. Um, there are going to be numerous initiatives on the ballot. Um, I don't know by count how many, but many states are looking into having independent commissions. Do you see a trend in that direction? Yes, I do see a trend. I, I think there's definitely a trend on that, and I think it goes back to the social networking that the Obama campaign used so well mm -hmm. to bring the awareness to people. And there's a new generation of voters that are out there that are very conscientious of what's going on. And uh, there's 20 states, but there's three countries also that have this. You've got Canada, you've got Australia, and um, those countries have this, uh, they, they don't. It's an independent commission that, that decides the boundaries and where they're going to go. Is there any evidence that the states that do have this, that it works better? 
it's mixed. The reviews are mixed. Um, Iowa has it worked very yeah. well, and it's one of the most competitive states mm -hmm. in the entire union. It's worked very well. California's process is new, but it was a very hard-fought battle to actually achieve an independent commission, and they now have it. You mentioned contesting the fiscal note in court. Say you get the language approved and get the petitions or at any point during that, do you expect to be challenged in court over this? Uh, yes, I think with an initiative, it's almost a, an, a written rule, unwritten rule, that from start to finish, you're banging your head against the wall. It's, it's a project from the beginning to the end, and even when an initiative passes, then the powers that be will challenge it. Part of that is because the courts don't, don't want to entertain a pre-election challenge to an initiative. Do you anticipate my next question? You could go through what some see as a very tough uh, petition oh, process, yeah. a campaign, get it passed, and then have a challenge. Absolutely. That's but, exactly what happened with uh, an initiative yeah, years ago. Yeah. English mm -hmm. is the official yeah, language. language. I was just going to say, we, we've done that. We've been yeah. down that road. And, and in fact, the legislature would not uh, vote on it. So we, we did an indirect initiative. The legislature rejected it. It went to the people, was voted in, and then it was challenged by the ACLU and ultimately was upheld as constitutional. Rob, why sh shouldn't people who are listening to this be very discouraged about that? Oh, um, I don't. I don't think any 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 progress ever happens by people just saying, "Oh, they're going to file a lawsuit. Yeah. The legislature is going to overturn anything you do anyway." Uh, nothing gets done unless you actually try, and and I think that's I, I think that's what you're seeing in a, on a grassroots level, um, and and the, these are people from both political spectrums mm -hmm. oh, yeah. who are very concerned about how boundaries are being drawn. Our rural constituents, our uh, citizens in Utah, are very concerned about these things. And, and even though they know it's a difficult process and it's not likely necessarily to bear fruit, it's something that we need to do and we need to try. I mm -hmm. saw you reaching for a piece of paper, Senator. Well, uh, uh, this goes back to the heart of the matter. 99% or 90% of those elected to the U.S. Congress are in safe seats. Contrast that to just the election of Al Franken. And in the Senate, they're a statewide election, and they're much more competitive. And I think that just proves the point, is that citizens really do deserve a better form of government where there's competitive. And whether it's in the private sector or in the public sector, when you have a competitive opportunity, it breeds the best of the candidate and issues. And that's really the bottom line. On that note, we're going to pause for one last round of messages. If you're watching on the record, we'll be right back. <laughs>